Well, those are your latest headlines. Hello and welcome to France Fan Cats. I'm Louise Hanna. At least six people have been killed in a six-magnitude earthquake in northern Italy this morning. The tremor hit the Emilia-Romagna region at 4 a.m., Four night shift workers were killed when factory buildings collapsed. A 37-year-old German woman died near to Bologna, while a 100-year-old woman was reported to have died from a heart attack brought on by the quake. Staying with Italy, the magistrate in charge of the investigation into Saturday's bomb attack says it's probably the work of a single person and that a link to the mafia is unlikely. A 16-year-old girl was killed and 10 others injured when gas canisters were exploded outside a school in the southern city of Brindisi. Well, let's cross live now to our correspondent in Rome, Seema Gupta. Uh, Seema, what's leading the police to believe that this is the act of an individual and not the mafia? Thank you very much. Seema, that was Seema Gupta, our correspondent reporting there from Rome for us. To other world news, could we see the tide change in Europe away from austerity measures and towards growth? US President Barack Obama hinted that could be the case after saying there's an emerging consensus more needs to be done to balance out tax hikes and spending cuts. Afghanistan is set to top the bill at a NATO summit in Chicago today. G8 leaders representing some of the world's biggest economies will We'll discuss the country's post-conflict future, from funding its security to upcoming elections. Well, let's talk now to France Van Katz, Annette Young, who's in Chicago. Annette, France's President Francois Hollande has already said he wants to pull French troops out earlier than planned. How can we expect other NATO members to react to that? And Annette, this has been Francois Hollande's first big performance as France's president abroad. How's he done? Thank you, Annette. Annette Young reporting there for us from Chicago. Some news just in for you. Two NATO soldiers have been killed in an attack in southern Afghanistan. We can now cross to France Van Katz correspondent Maeva Bambrook, who's in Kabul. Maeva, two NATO soldiers killed yesterday, two today. What's behind these attacks? Thank you very much, Maeva. Maeva Bambuk is speaking there from Kabul for us. We've just been told that two members of an anti-Assad political alliance in Lebanon have been shot dead at army checkpoints. It happened in the north of the country. Both men belong to the March 14th alliance, which is opposed to Syria's President Bashar al-Assad. Well, now let's cross to France Van Katz, Nicholas Blanford, who's in Beirut. Nicholas, there are conflicting reports at the moment as to how these men died. What are you hearing on the ground there? OK, I do apologise. We seem to have lost Nicholas. We'll try and bring him back as soon as we can. In the meantime, a blind Chinese dissident, Chen Guangcheng, has spent his first night in the US after touching down late last night. Well, let's take you back to our top story now. The man convicted of carrying out the Lockerbie air disaster in Scotland in 1988 has died. Well, let's get more on this from Hugh Miles, a Libya specialist based in Cairo. Thank you for being with us, Hugh. Hugh Al Megrahi was a very divisive figure, both in the UK and the United States. Why was that? And what impact did this case have on diplomatic relations between the UK and Libya and the US and Libya? Thank you very much, Hugh. That was Hugh Miles, a Libya specialist based in Cairo. And white weddings tend to be the norm, but how about an underwater one? Well, it certainly beats the traditional buffet. OK, that's it for now, but stay tuned. We're back in 20 minutes. Thank you.